Here's a quick video to show you how to do a structural analysis in Onshape using SimSolid Cloud. OK, I'm in Onshape and I want to do a, analyze this model. So the way I would do it is the following. First thing I do is I add SimSolid Cloud. So I add applications, SimSolid Cloud. It would add a new tab with SimSolid. Now, here's the tab. Let's just, let's just go through it a little bit. If you pick here, you can see the major functions down the left-hand side. There's a dashboard that you see, your project, set, your project panel, settings, things like appearance units, uh, custom material properties, etc. You have a nice uh, detailed help manual that you can access here as well as uh, a very quick intro that shows you the, the first four steps to get going in an analysis. But let's, let's, let's start from scratch. So the first thing I want to do is add a project, and I would pick uh, a model to add. So I'm going to add that model. It'll load the model into the system here. OK, here's my model. Um, First thing I want to do is create material properties. So I say uh, set material properties. Let's just make them all steel. OK, I have material properties defined. The next thing I have to do is create connections to connect my parts. There's about 55 parts in this model. If you want to see them a little bit more clearly, you can show the parts in random colors. But all these parts I have to connect. So the easiest way to do that is automatic connections. I just specify a gap and a penetration tolerance. And it will then find use that to find all the connections. Uh, so it found the connections. If I want to make sure everything's connected, I can check them, like show disconnected groups of parts. And in this case, everything's fine, so we're good to go there. The final thing I need to do is to create an analysis. So I would create a structural analysis. Let's add uh, constraints. So let's constrain here and here. And maybe rotate around and uh, do the same thing. And do it here and here. OK, and the last thing I want to do is create um, some some load. So let's just make a pressure load and let's just put it right uh, up here. So let's pick there and there, maybe something like that. OK, good. Well, now my model is fully defined and I'm good to go. So let's uh, let's just analyze it. I would just hit the solve button. Again, I don't have to make a mesh. It's it's uh, there's no meshing in some solid. So I just hit solve. And as it's solving, it will solve the model at least three passes and looking at uh, the convergence with each solution pass. Once it's done, it'll load the results like you see here. OK, so now, it, now it's pretty much standard stuff. I can, uh, I can view the, the, the deformed shape. I can move my legend around. I can animate it if I want. I can look at six colors. I can look at 12 colors. Um, I can animate displacements, I can animate stresses, you know, things like that, turn on and off edges, etc. Okay, so that's that's cool, but I think the, the more interesting bit is what happens if something changes. Now, let's assume that I'm going to do a design change and I want to, to see the performance impact of that design change. In some solids, it's easy to do that. You do it with something we call design study. So I'll add a, a second study. And now I can just uh, add, I can go back to Onshape, change the model, and bring it back in again. Or I can add an entirely new model. So I have a different configuration here. I open that up. Now, as I open the second geometric configuration, a couple things are going to happen. It's going to create a second design study. and it's going to associate all the connections and all the analysis definitions from the previous study. So all that does need to be done again. Even though my geometry's changed, everything is, is good to go. The, with the one exception, it doesn't know about the material properties for the change shapes. So I can go back here and just set those really quick. Let's just make them steel. OK, but now everything's good to go. So what I just need to do is solve. Let's solve the second study. 
The first one's already done. Okay, there we go. So there is my my results for my second study. I can animate that, etc. Uh, or I can go back and look at my first results. So I can come back here. Displacement for study one, displacement for study two. So you can see that uh, it's by the fact that I have, you know, a fairly large assembly of 50 parts. I've done an analysis of two different design configurations uh, in a few minutes with, uh, with no meshing with some solid cloud. Thanks for, thanks for watching.